Hello, good morning and welcome back. So today we're going to start a new chapter and this chapter is going to be on testing. Now not because this is the last chapter in the series, that means that our testing is not that important. The reason it's the last is because I felt that presenting the material in the order that I did prepares us for working with doing testing, um, sort of understanding testing better. Um, some of the things we're going to be talking about in testing, um, I think it would have been more and more difficult if you did not understand those other concepts. So what are we going to do in this first section is something very simple. We're going to use the testing package and do a, write a simple unit test. And so we can jump over to the package documentation page, scroll down until you find the testing package link, click on it, and then you're here. Now. I strongly suggest that you read this. I'm not gonna call all of it, but I cover enough to get to you going and do being able to do the most basic set of tests for your application, which you should absolutely definitely do and not leave out, okay? So, important thing here, it says the format of a test function look like function with the word test, capital T, and then XXS represent whatever you wanna put after it, and then it accept the parameter, a pointer to testing that T. So it's uh, accept a pointer to the type T, which is from the testing package. So that's the signature of the test function. All right, the next thing, important thing, is this blur about test files. They're given the name underscore test that go. So again, anything underscore test that go. And the convention is generally, when you write testing for a certain file, you give the file name underscore testing that go. All right, so let's get an example application going that we're gonna test. So I'm gonna start it from scratch with an example, and then I'm gonna write a simple function called mul for multiply. And the intent of this function is that it multiply two numbers, they can do parameters, and then return the result. And if your eyes are fast enough, you'll see that I've made a mistake. But we're hoping that we're gonna catch any mistake I've made in testing. So I write a test function, again, the word test with capital T, and then it accepts this parameter, t pointer, um, a pointer to testing that t. So I do that. Now once I've done that, I have to pass some arguments to my function to be able to test it. I expect a certain result, and I want to compare that with what I actually got. So argument a and b is you know, and the expected value. If I pass 0 and 0, I multiply, should get 0. And so now if I say got is equals to what my I call with my arguments, now I could compare what I got with what I expected. And if you look at the documentation here for t that error, it says it writes a log message and then is the same as calling fail, t that failed to say that the test failed. Well, in this case, it, it succeeded because I pass a and b as zero and zero, I expected zero, and I got zero. So my test passed, and you can see that there. Now, what happened when I go back, modify my test, add another test, and I put two times two, I expect four, or one times one, I expect one. So those are the different tests I'm gonna be doing. Well, if you look at it, my arguments, um, I'm repeating it over and over plus with the, what I expect. So why don't I wrap those up to capture the arguments that I'm gonna provide to any test function in a type? And I'm gonna call that my argument, a type called args. And so I can go ahead and start creating this type now my two types I'm going to provide to the function, which is A and B. Now I could create a slice of the argument here, but why do that? Because now I'll still need a slice of my expect value. And so it's, I'll be keeping them separate, you know, the arguments and the corresponding expect value. So it's best if I have a type to represent my argument, and then I have something that's a slice of the different tests I want to perform. And then now I just create instances of, um, you know, my argument and the expected value. So those go together and live together. So what I mean then is in the in example where I wanna um, do ar my argument is zero and zero, the expected value is one, and then my argument is one and one, the expected value is one and so on. And so now those go together and I don't have to worry about offset that are being different. So what I can do now is just loop over my test that I have, the different um, scenarios I wanna test, and then call my function with a different argument, set of argument, and then save it in got. And then when I test got versus t that tt that I expect, now I, it's easy for me to be able to add to this slice, all right? 
and so the same logic now apply to any number of test cases that I might write. So this is my test suite with a number of test cases. And so this is a little bit more manageable um, to understand and to read. All right, so now that I have this set up, now I can go back and just rerun my test when it failed and it says, oh, um, I got two unexpected one. So now I can go back now to my implementation and see where's the problem. And so if I go and fix this and make it a star and then rerun my test, notice how everything passed. But now it's easy for me to just add even more tests so I can do minus two times two or minus one times one, and then I just hit the test button. So once you have good unit test in place, it's very, very easy to run. So I can run it from within my ID or from the command line. But if you make it a habit of running, um, of writing tests like these, that are easy to maintain and it's easy to test, um, you wouldn't feel the burden of having new test cases. And if you ever change your code, you can always rerun your test easily to see if you've, you broke something. And so that's one of the biggest thing with software is that you introduce bugs in it. And if you don't have proper tests to test, test, to test your boundary conditions, you don't realize that you break things. So definitely take the time to write things to test boundary conditions. So putting enough test cases to really try and capture um, the different ways in which you're pro, you, you expect your thing to pass or fail. Hopefully, um, this shows you how easy it is to at least write simple test um, thing. The only thing we really use from the T type was this T that error F, um, and that's to say that oh, you know, we want to log an error and our test failed. All right, um, thumbs up the video, please, and thank you. Please subscribe if you haven't. Thank you. Finally. If you haven't yet, um, I'm on Twitter, follow me on Twitter, um, Instagram, definitely check me out on Instagram also. I appreciate it. Take care. See you. Have a great day. Bye.